The third thing that he tells him to do as a category is in verse 12 when he says, fight the good fight of the faith. Fight the good fight of the faith. Those words literally mean this, agonize the good agony of the faith. When Lance Armstrong is pedaling up the beyond category of the Pyrenees Mountains, there is an agony about it. His, his lungs are burning. His legs are screaming at him, but he continues to pedal. And that's the kind of fight that Paul is telling Timothy. Timothy, I know you're tired. I know the situation is difficult. You must keep going. You must keep fighting. Once Paul speaks of the, when he says that fight the good fight, I want to explain the word good for just a moment. In the New Testament, there are two different words for good. One of the words for good means the kind of goodness that you could see from the outside. The other kind of good is the kind that is on the inside. It can only be seen if you could see a person's heart. He says, Timothy, when I speak of the good agony, I'm talking about the kind that someone could see from the outside. I want you to fight the, the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Timothy, it is intrinsically good. It is something deep inside of you that both if they could watch you and if they could observe you from the outside, they would say that it would be good. But Timothy, as if they look even on the inside, they would say it is intrinsically good in here. I think again of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 12, which I shared with you in the last session, where it says, live such good lives among the pagans that though they may accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day that he visits us. So I would ask the question, are we agonizing in the fight with the good, with, with the good fight of faith, taking hold of our eternal life, grasping hold of it? And that phrase, take hold, is the fourth action word that he's supposed to do. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you were made in the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. To take hold means to grasp, to hold on with a grip. Now, right now, I have just taken hold of my cup. But honestly, I didn't, I didn't take a very strong hold. Now, watch what I do. Now, I am grasping at this cup. My knuckles are turning white. If you tried to take this cup from me, it would be very difficult because I am holding on as strongly as I can. Timothy, I want you to take hold of a strong grip of the eternal life to which you were called. And you've confessed it. You've said it. You know it. You're following it. You're pursuing it. Now take hold of it as if your life depends upon it. So in light of these four things, flee, pursue, fight, and take hold of, I would ask you that question. In your Christian life, as an individual, or in your family, or in your church, how do you feel like you're doing in these areas? And I don't mean like, oh, I feel good. I, I, I should rather say the phrase, how are you doing in these areas? Are you fleeing the things that would distract you from the gospel? Are you pursuing the things that would draw you closer to Christ in righteousness and godliness? Are you fighting? Are you engaged? Are you enduring the good agony of the fight? And are you holding on to this eternal life that you have? One of the problems that I see in the West, especially in America, is the, the grip that people have on their faith is about this much that a lot of people become Christians and they say, oh, that's a nice thing to have. Uh, but honestly, I, I'm not holding on to it that tightly. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that much to me. You know, it's, it's wonderful. And I can take a, I take a drink from it once in a while and it's refreshing. But what I see in the West is not the, the desire to hold on to it because it transforms us. 
In our church, we're talking more these days about discipleship, about following Christ, and not simply praying a prayer to to ask Jesus into our hearts. We believe that that's what we want, to, to confess our faith and to profess that Jesus Christ is Lord of lords and King of, uh, King of kings, but to live in such a way that shows that transformation. So how are we doing? You say, well, I'm not sure what to do. Pastor Bruce, if I were in your church, what would you tell me to do that I could take hold of and to pursue and to fight? Well, let me give you some suggestions. You could come up with many more yourself. Number one is read. Read this book. We now live in an age where there is so much information out there. I was talking to a leader the other day, and he said these profound words. He said, you know, up until the last 10 or 20 years, our challenge was to find information, to gather information. He said, but in the last 10 or 20 years, our, our, our challenge now is to sort information. We used to have to find it. Now we have so much, we have to sort it. In all of the things that you are finding information for, and all the things that you are learning, he said, and I try to tell our people the same thing, you have to be in this book. These are living words. These are are words that cut deeply into our heart, that, that give us guidelines to obey, and principles to obey, and commands to obey. That's one thing I would suggest. The second thing I would suggest is pray. And some people say to me, Pastor Bruce, I, I, I don't know how to pray. I say, do you know how to have a conversation? Well, yeah, I can have a conversation. I said, imagine a conversation with God, a respectful conversation with God. But they say, Pastor Bruce, he doesn't talk back. I can't hear him. And I say, well, if it helps, imagine being in a room with a friend. And what kind of conversation would you have? He said that this is the God of the universe. He is holy. He is righteous. He is powerful. We teach a little acronym called ACTS. A-C-T-S is the four English letters. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication, or request. Let your prayers be made known to God in that way. But prayer. The more years that I learn to pray, the deepening relationship I have is expressed in my conversation with God. So I'd say read. I would say pray. A third suggestion, I would say connect with other people. Again, we live in a Western culture which is almost exclusively individualistic. What we're challenging the church to do and the people in our church to say is get connected with other people. That we need to do life together. So what I say is come to church on Sunday, listen to my messages, worship together, fellowship together, but during the week get together in a small group. When I preach a sermon, then I also produce a set of notes, questions that are based on the sermon that I preached. I might look at another passage of Scripture, and it's very simple, two or three pages of of questions or comments, and I say, take these notes into your home and discuss these questions. When you connect with other people, you don't just go home from church and say, oh, that was a good sermon, I'll see you next Sunday. You say, I wonder what that means. I wonder what that would look like in my life. So. Read, pray, connect with other people. And fourth, I would say simply this, ask someone where you can serve. And we encourage our people to serve in two different ways. We say, would you serve in one way inside the church? And would you serve in one way outside the church? So maybe you can help teach Sunday school. We, we have people, we have a nursery. Would you help serve in the nursery? Um, we even have someone who makes the coffee on Sunday morning. When people come to our church, they like to have a cup of coffee and and to talk with other people. Would you like to be the person who makes the coffee? Well, I can do that. You mean that's service for the Lord? Sure, it's service for the Lord. We have people who are at the front door. When you walk in the front door of our church, we call them greeters. They say, hello, welcome to Bethel. My name is Joe. Who are you? Glad you came to our church. And there are people who just like to be with people. There are all kinds of ways to serve inside the church. But we say, that's not enough. We'd like you to serve at least in one way outside the church. I, I belong to one of the service organizations in our community. There are a couple of groups or clubs that meet once a week, and there's a meal, and, and we learn. Some speaker comes in and talks, and I just participate with them. And when they do certain projects, I help with their projects and fundraisers. It's a way for me to connect in the community. And they say, 
Uh, it's a way for me to not be pastor in a church, but to be a real person out in the community. But the gospel is always motivating. So there's some ideas for you, just four. You can think of some more yourself. Now, that's how we pursue him. We want to pursue and we want to look for him in these amazing ways and, and holding ourselves accountable. And, and we pursue him actively and not passively. TVS is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit www.tvseminary.com. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10, 11. How to give to TVS Ministry. You may give online at efta.org slash give now. In the description place, write Russia Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Or make checks out to EFCA. Write on the check memo line, Russian Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Mail to EFCA Donor Services, 901 East 78th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55420-1300 or send your gift through PayPal for tvs.gift at gmail.com.